And welcome in, guys. Welcome to the Wrexham AFC Wigan EFL pregame, EFL English Football League Cup. That for the benefit of Wrexham worldwide fans, like I say. I know you Wrexham fans close to Wrexham know exactly what I'm talking about. But sometimes people far and wide, they need a little bit of help, right? So EFL is what we're here for. Wrexham taking on Wigan, coming off at the racecourse ground. Another home game, and off the back of the last game, and by the way, the last game, the post game against MK Dons, I couldn't do it. You know why? We had no power. That's twice recently that we've lost all power in the region, and uh, they must be fixing something on the line, that's all I'm thinking, but bad timing, guys. You could do it outside of when I want to do something. Just joking around, joking around. But anyway, apologies, no show last time. I hope that doesn't become more of the regularity. In fact, I don't want it to. So anyway, we're here for EFL, but I've got to say this much. Don't be down about the game on the weekend because you know what? Home openers do not always go to plan. I remember as a kid against AFC Wimbledon, there's a story coming up against AFC Wimbledon. You want to catch that, and that's in the next show, the AFC Wimbledon pregame coming up. That's League Two on the road. You want to catch that one. It's going to be very interesting. It's a story from when I was a kid, and it regards AFC Wimbledon. But like I say, don't be down. Home openers do not always go perfectly, and it's going to be a long season. So just keep that in mind, it's a marathon. It's not a race to the dash. It's a marathon. Phil's going to have some things to to sort out. We've seen that these players coming in now are a higher quality. Wigan's going to be the same. It's going to be a tough game. It's not going to be a gimme. And from now on in, you want to get used to that fact that most of the games we play are going to be tough. And I'm not saying National League's easy. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying we're now meeting up against a higher breed of players. As we go through Wigan's squad moving through, you'll see exactly what I mean with that. But let's stay on this fantastic journey because it is a wonderful journey we are on. And we're not in semi-professional soccer, football anymore. It's full bore professional so league two that's where we're at and like i say what kind of season do you want is what i'm asking you now do you want a season with just league games in it so wrexham can focus just on the league or do you want to go far in the leagues in the efl english football league cup or the fa cup football association cup do you want to go far in those guys to maybe drag someone close to the race course ground or maybe somebody like a man city Maybe a Liverpool, maybe even a Chelsea, maybe even a Man United. And we just beat Man United 3-1, didn't we? And lost 5-0 to a Chelsea. But anyway, we had a great tour. Here's some things I want to tell you. The first thing we're going to do, like we say, is club news. Let's take a look at some of the club news. But before we do that, I'm going to show you something. On the weekend, I went to a Canadian Premier League, professional Premier League match here in Canada. Uh, Cavalry FC taking on Forge FC. It finished 3-0 to Cavalry FC. It was in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I met up with Director of Soccer Operations. Janelli Smith is a top guy. He's been around the game. He's the director of soccer for Forge FC, the most successful Canadian Premier League team in history. And here, take a look. That's what I that's what I take with me when I when I do the game, yeah. But uh, right here, right there, that's Jelani Smith. There's the autograph just there. I told you, Jelani, I was going to show that to everybody because we're going to get Jelani Smith on the Ultimate Soccer Show to do an interview about director of soccer. And what it all entails. What does a director of soccer do? Most of you guys may have a good handle on that, but we'll tell you exactly what they do. Because let's face it, if you're a director of soccer at one club, you could pretty much do the job elsewhere. So it'll give you a little insight. Anyway, first piece of news on the club news. There's not a lot, but take a look. It's basically images of what I'm going to show you from the website. And anything you need to talk about, Wrexham FC, go to the website. If you need a ticket, go to the website. Make sure the money goes through the club. If you need the shirts and anything else, go through the shirts, go through the shop. Don't go through the second hands on somebody, somebody else's sites. Anything you need from the club, go through the club. It just makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. But anyway, let's get into it. The only news I've got for you is this image from the club. And like I say, it's about shirt sales. It's about ticket sales. And it's about the images from around the US tour and the opening game of the season. Take a look. So like I say, there's not much news to give you because obviously I'm keeping you up to speed with all the news 
all the time. But Jelani Smith, remember that coming through, director of soccer operations, Forge FC Canadian Premier League. We're going to get him on soon. Jelani, big up to you, mate. It was lovely to meet you. And I'll tell you what, sitting next to him all game long, it was a pleasure to meet someone that knows the game. And even the new things that have changed in and around the game, and also some of the political things that have changed in and around the game, he understands that as well. I'll tell you what, I've had conversations with a lot of people in the game, and some of the big coaches in the game as well. But Jelani Smith, I've got to tip my hat. Wonderful person, nice guy, nice guy, but what a football brain. Forge FC has the right guy on top of that club. Now, before we get too far in this, let's take a look at Wigan FC. Wigan Athletic, to be precise. Who are they? What are they? Let's have a look at some of the, the firepower, the form, the danger men, you know, your general findings. And, you know, before we go into this, last show, I said this about three guys. I'm going to bring up the names. Day, Daniel Harvey, Jonathan Leco, and Mohamed Asa. Take a listen. When I'm looking at teams and I'm scouting, I get it pretty good. This is what I said last game about MK Dons and all three of these guys hit us at the back of the net. You've got to look at some of the danger men. And, and, and looking at the danger men, I've got to say, there's only a couple that really we need to worry about. The first one would be Mohamed Aiza, 28-year-old. Decent striker, decent striker. 32 games last year, got 11 goals on a team that was failing, remember? Korea for MK Dons is 67 games, 23 goals. So he knows where the back of the net is. It doesn't all look that good for MK Dons. Just don't get too worried about it, Wrexham fans. Next one up is Daniel Harvey, midfielder. 34 games last year, three goals. You've got to say on the career, 106 games, seven goals. Then there's 24 year old Jonathan Laco, 24 year old, came from Charlton. Prior to that, was with Birmingham last year, 18 and four. So what I'm saying there is I pick out the guys that are probably going to hurt us or the guys that we should worry. And I've done it for a little while now. And you guys looking and watching all through last season know that uh, that's exactly what I bring you. We can focus on our team if you want, but I focus on the enemy so that you know going to the game, all right, this is what we need to watch out for. Boom, end of story. Now, as it stands, as it stands, I'm going to go you through this one nice and slow. Wigan formed 1932. I'm slowing down the train for worldwide Wrexham fans so that they can get this, right? You know it. Anyway, much love to the real Wrexham fans back there in Wrexham. I know you know this, so I don't want to dumb it down too much for you, but everybody else deserves to learn in semi-fast time. So Wigan Athletic formed in 1932. Amateur League in the Cheshire Leagues and in the Northern Premier Conference, all right? So they played from 32, 1932 to 1978, whereupon they landed in the fourth division proper to get into the league. And you got to say, this coach now that they have, is Sean Maloney, 40-year-old Scotsman. And he also was player of the year twice, twice with Wigan Athletics. So that's pretty nascent. Uh, he was with Wigan as a player from 2011 to 2015 and 79 games and he scored 14 goals. He was a midfielder come winger. And he also played with Hull City, Aston Villa, Celtic and Chicago Fire in the US. Coaching record... Well, it's not that great, so that's good for us, right? So, the coaching record, when he was with the Scottish team up in the Premiership, hey, Barinian, uh, December 21st to April 22nd, that will tell you that it wasn't a long time. Seven months in the job, 6-6-7, six, 31%. Six, six wins, six draws, seven losses for 31%. That's not lighting it up. But off the back of that, well, it's got him the Wigan job. He's been at the Wigan job since January 23. So, he's been there... One month longer than the last job, and he's still in the job. He's got five wins, eight draws, six losses. Most of the games from last year, obviously. One win from this year, and he's 26% right now as a coach. That's not that good. <laughs> that is not that good. Anywho, Wigan, predominantly, they're what you would say a, a championship team, trying to be a championship team right now that's literally a League One club. Much like MK Dons, they're a League One club is where they should be, and that's where they are right now. They got relegated last year, finishing 24th on the season, and uh, you've got to say they had a hard time all through the season. And if you look throughout the squad, which we will do very shortly, there's a message to that squad. They offloaded a lot of players at the end of last season, 
And you can say when you get relegated, you normally do, yeah? But uh, they didn't keep much. And it's a very, very, very young team, especially in the midfield. i got to tell you, if they meet up with an exclusive team like Wrexham who can pass the ball like we can. And incidentally, in the last game, we outpassed MK Dons and outshot them. So don't be down about thinking we can't get this done. Yes, we can get it done and we will get it done. It was just a bad day at the races. But you got to say, it's a young team with Wigan Athletic. Absolutely could play to our advantage over the season. We're going to try to get back up into the championship. I don't think they're going to get there. They've got a lot of good kids on loan from likes of Arsenal, likes of Liverpool, yeah? Young kids, 19 to 22 years old. And I say, if you can't make it where you were, why are you at this lower league? Tells me something about the quality that probably isn't there. But there's a lot of youngsters is what I'm saying in that team. So that bodes well for us. Couple of players I want to talk about, and, and in reverse order, Ben Amos 33, but it's going to be Tickle that probably gets the minutes in goal as well. But Ben Amos 33 started with Manchester United, a big keeper, and he's gone through a lot of clubs. So there's great goalkeeping experience. Even if Amos doesn't play, he can filter down that experience through the goalkeeping course. So Tickle may well start, maybe Ben Amos, but goalkeeping isn't their problem at all. On the defensive side, a few decent defenders, a lot of youngsters too, but one I want to talk about is this guy Liam Morrison is a Scotsman born in Scotland obviously and he was one on he was one on the books to go to Celtic before Celtic got him Bayern Munich stepped in he's only 20 years old right now but Bayern Munich have stepped in and he's been at Bayern and he's going to be playing in the Regional Liga and Bayern 5 Bayern 2 but I don't know if he's going to make it if Bayern release you to come back to UK that tells me something's not correct maybe they want to toughen him up because in the German game it's more about the technical side well, in the British game, it's a lot more physical. It's a lot more fiery. There's a lot more studs come at your shins than do in Europe. And I think you realize that too. So Liam Morrison is an interesting thing. Are they are they trying to get him toughened up? Or is it the end of the road for Morrison? You don't know. A guy that I do think you might want to watch out for, though, Charlie White got two goals on the weekend against Derby County. And I'll tell you what, Charlie's a guy that does know where the back of the net is. 351 games in. He's got 116 goals. So, Charlie, a goal every three. Remember that name, Charlie White, because he might well be getting close to Ben, maybe Rob, maybe Mark in the back of the net. You don't know. So keep him, keep, a, keep an eye on White. And like I say, it's a young team. It's moving through. They got relegated last year. If you're looking at the form, it's pretty disastrous. Looking at this year's form, though, they started the season well with that win over Derby County, 2-0. And incidentally... Wigan Athletic is literally bottom of the table after the win on minus five points. And you're saying, well, how can they be on minus five points? Well, the point is they got an eight-point slap on the wrist for late funding releasement to the EFL. See, the EFL needs to know if you're literally black or red in the books. So they didn't release the funding early enough, or the information too, and the EFL said, well, phew, we're going to have to slap you again. So they've had two four-point four point deductions. They won on the weekend. They're now minus five at the bottom of the league in League One. But if they keep winning, well, it won't take them long to move up, will it now? So there you go. Some more, more important points there. The eight-point deduction. They sit bottom. And you've got to say, 10 players have come through that academy at Wigan that are eligible to play through the team. So... You can say they're having financial troubles. They obviously recently just sold James McLean for about £225,000 to us, Wrexham AFC. And James is, is Wigan's last year's player of the year. He also won it in 2014 as well. So it's kind of ironic that we pinch their player of the year. But I think James McLean can be very, very helpful for Wrexham this season. Given what he's done over his career, I think he can be absolutely on the money for what we need. We need a tough guy in the middle, but we also need a guy that can play the ball around. And I'm telling you now, he definitely will. As for the game itself, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. No denying it. I mean, Wigan's a, Wigan's a top operation. Coming in under duress, young team, still trying to find themselves. They're coming in with a, a confidence win against Derby at the weekend. We lost. you got to say, it could turn out to be a bit of a slugfest. But on the whole of the night... I do see that Wrexham could get this win. And what would the disappointment, let's say that much, 
of the loss to MK Dons on the weekend. I can fully realise that the guys, Phil Parkinson, Rob and Ryan, and everybody and every one of you in the crowd are really fired up for this one because I think losing is not something we want to get used to. And if you don't want to get used to it, you won't get used to it. So I think that Phil will have the team ready to go, fired up to the perfect level so they're not going over the edge with the emotions. They're channeling everything as they do. And I want to see us play the ball around like Real Madrid, like we did all last season when we were killing teams off. Once we get that goal, play it around, play our passing game. And like I say, the last game we played at home against MK Dons, 28 shots. We're making chances, we're creating chances, and we will do for the rest of the season. So do not be down about that loss. Get ready for this game, because I tell you what, I think we're in for a win. And do you want a big cup run, or are you more interested in just the league and safety, and getting up the table, and charging a mount to get into the playoff spots, and who knows what's possible? But remember, it's our first year back. It's not gonna be easy. And as I told you last show, Every game is a cup final for Wrexham because everybody wants to beat us. At the end of the day, get ready for Wigan, guys, because I can't wait. Let's have it. Cheers.